Hello and welcome to today's lesson. In today's lesson, we're going to look at the applications of potential dividers in electrical circuits. And this lesson is appropriate for AQA A level physics focusing on the electricity specification. So, we're going to be looking at what potential dividers are in electrical circuits, understand how they work, and then look at how you can calculate values in a potential divider circuit. Now, this links into the AQA A-level specification as as follows. Now, in previous lessons, we've looked at the definition of a potential divider, and we've looked at the basic way in which we can calculate values using potential divider circuits. But if you'll notice in the in specification, it, they state that you need to be aware of various examples, such as the use of variable resistors, thermistors, and LDRs in a potential divider circuit which is what we're going to look at in today's lesson. Now, previously, we looked at an example where we had two outputs which were the same in a potential divider electrical circuit. So, for example, they could be two light bulbs, they could be two resistors, okay? But it's much more common to place a sensor or a rheostat in a potential divider circuit. Now, just to clarify a few things before we move on, which we've learned previously, we've established that from Kirchhoff's laws of electrical circuits, V in must equal V1 plus V out. We are going to define V out as the useful output voltage of the circuit, which in this notation is the potential difference across the lower rail of our particular electrical circuit, and that the potential difference of the outputs will split in direct proportion to the resistance of the output. Now, this is extremely important because things like rheostats or LDRs or thermistors can change their resistances. So, as a result, they can change how much potential difference they will take from the EMF source and which will leave the useful output. Now, remember that in a potential divider, the EMF provided by the voltage store, so the power pack, the bulb, sorry, the battery, my apologies, can, must split over the two outputs. Now, let's consider the following situation. We've got a potential divider with a rheostat as our waste output and a bulb as our useful output. Now, if we, can, if we set our rheostat to have a much larger resistance compared to the bulb, it's going to take the majority of the potential difference. Because remember, potential difference will split in this circuit in direct proportion to the resistances of the outputs. So, if the rheostat has a much larger resistance compared to the bulb, it will take a much larger potential difference compared to the bulb, and that will therefore lead to a dim bulb, because there's less potential difference. So, when you do P equals... VI or P equals I squared R when you work it through like that, you're going to get a lot less power going to your bulb, so therefore it's going to be a lot dimmer. Now, by converse, if the rheostat is set to have a much lower resistance compared to the bulb, it's going to take little of the potential difference. So now, there's a much larger resistance in the bulb in comparison to the rheostat, so it'll take a lot more of the potential difference compared to the rheostat, so that will lead to a bright bulb, which is how devices like, re like dimmer switches actually work. Now, it's important to note that in all potential divider circuits, the current going through the components, in this example, the rheostat and the bulb, are the same because they're in a series circuit. Now, like what Kirchhoff's first law of electrical circuits states, it's that the current in a single path will always be the same. So, because they're in a series, in a single path, they will have the same current going through them. Now, that's important because that's actually why the potential difference of the outputs is directly proportional to the resistance. Because we know that potential difference equals IR. So, PD and R can only actually be directly proportional if I is a constant in this particular example. So, we can say PD is directly proportional to R, or PD is equal to a constant times R, so that constant is going to be current. Now, just to clarify any misconception here, the current in the entire circuit can change depending on the resistances of the outputs. 
So for example, if you set your rheostat to have a greater resistance, well then the entire circuit will have a greater resistance because we've got a large resistance in one of a series output, so the current going through both outputs is lower. And by converse, if we change our rheostat to have a lower resistance, the entire circuit has less resistance, so the current going through both outputs is higher. So just to clarify, the current going through each output has to be the same, but the value which is the same can change dependent on your sums of resistances. Now, we can also do this in terms of a sensor. So let's not just talk about a rheostat, let's look at a sensor such as a thermistor. So a thermistor, as you'll be aware, is a semiconductor. And as you'll be aware from GCSE, the higher the temperature of a thermistor, the lower its resistance because it's a semiconductor. Now, in another lesson, we'll look at what the physics behind that is. But at this point, let's just take for granted that the higher the temperature of a thermistor, the lower its resistance. So if we have a high temperature in our surroundings, this will give a low potential a low resistance sorry, to the thermistor. So proportionally, it will take less potential difference. So therefore, on our useful output, on our bulb, it will have a higher resistance compared to the thermistor, so it'll have a higher potential difference. So that's a way in which the external conditions of the surroundings can affect the useful output of a circuit and obviously vice versa as well. So if we had a high temperature, that would then give a high resistance to the thermistor, so it would take proportionally more potential difference compared to your useful output of the bulb, so therefore the bulb has less potential difference because it has less resistance, so the bulb would get dimmer. Now this can be used with any type of sensor, so you can use it with a thermistor. You could use it with an LDR, you could use it with a pressure sensor, and you can use that so that the external conditions of the surroundings can actually affect your useful output of your electrical circuit. So, we can use them in light sensors in street lamps, central heat and thermostats, and dimmer light switches. They're all examples where we can use a sensor as a potential in a potential divider circuit to therefore affect the output of our electrical circuit. Now, just to um, link this in with load and a potential divider, because what we can do is, like previously, we can actually place the sensor in parallel with the useful output. Now, remember, if we place something in parallel with the useful output, we call that loading the potential divider. Now, this is quite a complex circuit, but we've still got to consider what's going on. So, let's just think about this logically. If we have a higher temperature, we've established that for a thermistor, the higher the temperature leads to a lower resistance. So therefore, what will happen is the equivalence resistance, because we're now in parallel, will in fact go down. So therefore, this decreases the resistance of the entire rail. So therefore, it decreases the potential difference the useful output has. Because now, in proportion to the wasted output, the useful output has a lower resistance because it's now in parallel, so the equivalent resistance is lower, so that it has a lower proportion of resistance, so it takes a lower proportion of the potential difference. Whilst conversely, if we have a higher temperature, therefore the equivalent resistance will be higher, so therefore it will increase the proportion of potential difference the useful output has. So, in today's lesson, what we've looked at is we've looked at potential dividers, how they work, and then we'll link them into various applications such as a thermistor, such as a rheostat. And then finally, we've looked at in the very complex application of when we put a sensor uh, in parallel with the useful output, which, is a, which we call loading the potential divider. So if you have learned in today's lesson, you should be able to state what a potential divider is, state basically how it works, link it into an application with a sensor or a varying resistance output and then link it into the change in potential difference and then f finally link that into if we place that sensor in parallel with the useful output. Hopefully you've enjoyed this lesson on potential dividers. Thank you and have a lovely day.